Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Tuesday, July the 24th, 2018. Gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, both free sites. Let's talk about Alexander Usyk. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. What I want people to do, Usyk delivered for us. He beat Gassiev in a battle between unbeatens. What I want people to do who are thinking about structuring future bets is to look at the structuring of the bet I recommended here. Right? Understand both of these guys went off at relatively even money. I know when the fight was first announced, Usyk was favored. Then the line shifted. By the time they hop in the ring, it's an even money fight. You still had an opportunity to make money on the fight. Let's say you were going to bet $10 on one side or the other. Well, because the casino gave you a plus 270, a plus 270 on the under nine and a half rounds, you understood that you could take care of the gassy of side of the bet by simply taking that under nine and a half rounds. In other words, the fight didn't end by knockout, but you understood <clears throat> for Gassiev to win the fight, he was not going to do so by decision, right? He would have to catch and stop Usyk. And so you were taken care of on the Gassiev side, and rather than an even money play there, you got a plus 270. So then you were able to, you also got Usyk under nine and a half rounds at the plus 270 price so then you were able to shift money as suggested in the pre-fight video here online you're able to shift money to Usyk simply to win because you understood that based on styles right Usyk had a good chance of winning by decision of just boxing the socks off of Murat Gassiev right if the fight made it to the later rounds, more than likely it was going to go Usyk's way because Gassiev would have failed at landing the big shot. That's exactly what happened, right? Let me also say this too. Prince Nassim Hamed, very savvy guy, is now going around after this fight saying that Usyk is a serious threat, a serious threat to Anthony Joshua, right? What I want people to understand is Usyk so special that if you Google Dwyer Usyk 2016 on YouTube right now, you're going to dig up a 2016 video I did here where I talk about how Usyk is a serious threat to the heavyweight title. Understand we're in a flat-footed era. Guys are not trying to beat you on volume. Guys are trying to knock you out. Right? Between Wilder and Joshua, both of them have only had one fight go the distance. These guys are not mobile heavyweights. They can't move. If you're dancing around the ring, you can avoid these guys, right? Usyk is 6'2 or 6'3, depending on reports. Folks, he's a big man. He's a southpaw. In other words, he's not going to get hit all day by Anthony Joshua's ponderous left jab, right? He's a southpaw. And so he's going to have the movement advantage because he spent his life developing things that Joshua and Wilder don't quite have, right? A back foot game, for example. He'll be the one with the timing advantage over both of these guys, right? As odd as it sounds, I know Usyk's calling out Tony Bellew. Let's do the math on that one, right? Bellew big in the UK. The UK right now is the global capital, 
right? It's the center of the universe right now for the heavyweight division. Only one country is pulling in 70,000 plus for heavyweight title fights right now, and that's the United Kingdom. So I think Usyk's figured out, and keep in mind, Usyk, a Ukrainian, has spent much of his career on the road. I believe Usyk, who just won in Moscow, I believe Usyk understands that if he goes to the UK and if he beats a big name, he'll be in the mix for Anthony Joshua's April date at Wembley next year. Right, Joshua? has offered Deontay Wilder $15 million to fight him next April at Wembley. Now, the Wilder people, justifiably, are saying, you've got to be kidding. Number one, we've offered Joshua more money than that. <laughs> right? You know, number two, we're not some cruiserweight trying to enter the division to fight for some other guy's heavyweight title, we actually have our own title. In other words, in the negotiations, we're not going to pull a muscle trying to get a heavyweight title. We already have one. So based on principle, Wilder understands that the $15 million, given the gate they've been getting at Joshua fights, 70,000 people plus, might be low he also understands that sooner or later, whoever has other shares of the heavyweight title are going to have to see him. Right? In other words, you're not going to be viewed as the man at heavyweight unless you fought Deontay Wilder. So I believe Usyk's real game in calling out Tony Bellew, who, in my opinion, would be a tougher matchup for him than either Joshua or Wilder, right? YouTube, if you want to let me have it in the comment section of this video, go for it, right? Usyk's calling out Bellu because he realizes if he beats Tony, who's very good friends with Anthony Joshua, then he'll be in the mix as a guy who was the former undisputed and let's not confuse undisputed with unified unified just means i have a couple of the belts undisputed means major sanctioning bodies folks i have all the belts Usyk in 15 fights has become the undisputed cruiserweight champion understand if he goes to heavyweight and beats a man who just beat david hay twice twice then he can show up ringside and fans are going to say, Joshua, when are you going to fight this man? Especially since I don't expect Joshua to fight Wilder. Why? Because Wilder's too dangerous. Joshua privately knows he's chinny. And Joshua also knows that Wilder is flawed and could get beaten by one of the other guys at heavyweight. So why fight him? This is, in a sense, kind of like... Floyd Mayweather back in the day and Antonio Margarito, right? Margarito's style would have given Mayweather problems. But Margarito was a flawed fighter who I'm sure Mayweather understood somebody else could take care of. As I make this video, Floyd never fought Antonio Margarito, who actively campaigned for that fight, just like Wilder's campaigning to fight Joshua. So I think Usyk understands. Beat Bellu, he doesn't have to worry about these other fights at heavy. He'd be in line for a shot at Joshua. Let's talk about Usyk at heavy too. I believe there are two guys right now who would beat him at heavy. Right? That's Tyson Fury. That's Joseph Parker. Understand, Fury, big man, with a jab, can move, has the feet to move, right? I believe he could move with Usyk. I don't think Usyk's ready for his size. Understand, too, Tyson Fury, ambidextrous. Usyk, southpaw stance, gave Gassiev all kind of problems. Fury can mirror that southpaw stance. 
If they get inside, if he tries to duck under Fury's jab to get inside on Fury, he's going to find out that Fury is the better inside fighter than him. Right? Joseph Parker, folks, I'm just telling you, and I know the bullets never really got flowing in that Joshua Parker fight. Right? But understand, Joseph Parker is one of the few heavyweights. Might be the only heavyweight who, in my opinion, is a better athlete than Alexander Usyk. He certainly hits harder than Usyk. He can move. I encourage you to look at his fight against Yui Fury. He can move. Right? He'd be able to hunt down the smaller Usyk in a way we didn't see Gassiev even attempt. To sum up, Usyk's a major threat to current heavyweight holders. Right? Fury doesn't have a title right now. Parker doesn't have a title. I believe he's a big-time threat. Big-time threat. I would take him. Let's just call it as it is. I would take him, and I would expect him to be a sizable underdog against Wilder and Joshua. Right? If Fury, I'd be one of those people looking at Fury at the weigh-in to figure out the lay of the land. If Fury gets back to the fighter he was, if he loses some of that weight, let's face it, the extra weight he's gained doesn't help his game. If he loses some of that weight, and if he gets back to the guy he was against Vladimir Klitschko, if I'm looking at the weigh-in, and Fury looks lean and he looks mentally focused, I'll take Fury over Usyk. Hell, I'll take Fury over anyone except perhaps Joseph Parker. Right? As for Parker, yes, I'm expecting him to beat Dylan White. Right? I believe all Parker needs is a referee who's going to allow him to fight inside. Well, let's talk about Usyk against Gassiev, both unbeatens, right? Now, understand there's a difference between these two guys, and it's profound. <clears throat> it's awareness. Usyk's 31, right? And he has developed a lot of styles of boxing, a lot of styles of boxing. So he's experienced... And for him, before this fight, he thought, how am I going to fight this fight? Gassiev was 24. Folks are not the same age. Gassiev is what I call a fastball pitcher. He has one style that he does exceptionally well. He gets inside. He throws short punches. He hurts you from up on the pocket. Right? Well, round one said all you needed to know because the question here for boxing fans was which strategy, which strategy was Usyk going to use? And was that going to be enough to keep Gassiev from his A game? You understood if you move Gassiev off his A game, if you move him off his fastball, he didn't have a B game that would be able to compete against a world-class fighter like Usyk, who has multiple A games. Usyk can fight inside. Usyk can fight outside. Usyk can rely on a jab. Usyk can lead with power shots. Understand, Usyk's been in the ring with heavy hitters before. He fought and beat Marco Huck. He fought and beat Wolderchick. Right, guys, with power. Let's remember, Huck goes the distance against Alexander Povetkin in a very close fight. Right, so Usyk dealing with guys with big punches is nothing new. So the first round starts, and just understand, the fighters themselves don't know how it's going to play out. In Gassiev's mind, as a 24-year-old unbeaten fighter, all he knows is 
men have wilted on his style. Maybe his style, getting inside, throwing bombs. Think young Mike Tyson. Maybe his style's a new paradigm. Maybe it's different this time. Maybe whatever Usyk does, it's not going to matter. Maybe like Wilderchick, he won't be able to keep Gassiev on the outside. Right? After all, Usyk's in his 30s. Right? The best movers in history at heavyweight, think Ali, tended to be younger. Right? Look at the ages of Ali when he wins the title. Look at the age of a Floyd Patterson when he wins the title. Right? These guys tend to be a little bit younger. Right? Your legs are the first to go. Here is Usyk at 31. Does Usyk have the legs and the stamina to stay away from Gassia for 12 rounds? First round comes out, and you see that Usyk is going to concede the pocket to Gassiev. But what he's going to do is he's going to rely on a jab, right? A jab and movement. Usyk's so advanced that when Gassiev gets by the jab and lands some hooks, you'll notice Usyk covers up, right? He turtles. But he's so advanced, folks, that he's moving while he's turtling, right? The skill level's off the page. Understand, this guy, pound for pound, is one of the absolute best in boxing, right? When you think of Usyk, when you think of the very best in boxing, right, the very best, Think of the other guy who was recently an undisputed champion, Terence Crawford. Same type thing as Usyk. Multilingualist in the ring. Can adapt. Can fight inside. Can fight outside. Can stalk fighters. Can be stalked and knows what he's doing. Right? Other guys on the pound for pound list, just off the top of my head, on the fly here in a video. I would say Mikey Garcia. I would say Gennady Golovkin, understand, Golovkin's interesting here because it was his guy, Abel Sanchez, who was in the corner of Gassiev in this fight. Right? Also, let me give credit to another Ukrainian and people keeping track of the very best in boxing pound for pound. When you're talking about countries which per capita have the best fighters in the world, just understand the Ukraine's not the biggest country on the planet. But somehow it's given us the Klitschko brothers, and somehow it's also given us Usyk and Vasyl Lomachenko, who hops in the ring with Usyk after the fight in a scene that politically was explosive, since right now Russia and the Ukraine are not on the best diplomatic terms, and the fight was in Russia, right? Well, let me just say this. First round comes, and you understood. Usyk's going to operate from the outside. You understood he was just too fast-handed. Much faster hand speed than Gassiev. You understood that Gassiev doesn't have ring coverage. In other words, let's talk about Deontay Wilder. This fact's significant as it relates to Usyk. You could be halfway across the ring. And Wilder, like the post office, can get the power there with punch. In other words, you're way outside. You're like, he can't catch me out here. Whap! You're down. By the time you figure out what's going on, the ref is in the high number. Seven, eight, nine, right? Here, you understood that as strong as Gassiev was, as strong as he was, his punches are short. It helps him greatly when he's deep in the pocket, right? He's a short puncher. He's Joe Lewis. He's not Deontay Wilder. He's not Golovkin. 
So Abel Sanchez in Golovkin's corner can say, hey, champ, go get him. And Golovkin from way outside can throw punches that hit guys so unprepared that they're hit in odd places, right? Marco Antonio Rubio's hit on the top of the head. You can imagine he saw the punch coming. He was like, what, what, what's this? Hits him on the top of the head. Right? Golovkin doesn't have to be in your area code to deliver the package. Wilder doesn't have to be in your area code to deliver the package. Gassiev does. So against Usyk, Usyk could tell off the spacing, which Usyk's creating because Usyk's the one moving, right? Lateral movement. He's circling him. He's behind a jab. He's moving away. Right, Usyk knew at this distance, Gassiev can't catch me. Then when Gassiev was able to jump in mid-range, Usyk knew to turtle and to keep moving. Right, Usyk wouldn't allow Gassiev to set up shop in the pocket. And Usyk, one of boxing's best athletes, was able to keep this going for 12 rounds. You understood. Gassiev was not going to be effective as long as Usyk kept this fight plan going in equilibrium. That something had to change for Gassiev to have a chance to win rounds. And Gassiev couldn't make it change because he doesn't have a back foot game. He couldn't change the dynamic. The fight is him trying to get inside on Usyk. And Usyk flashing a jab on the balls of his feet, moving around, having punches. Where when Gassiev got by the jab, Usyk had an uppercut for him, didn't he? Right? It's a right jab the southpaw's throwing. So when he throws the uppercut, when Gassiev gets by the jab, it's with his dominant hand. Right? Usyk has things set up where Gassiev, as Teddy Atlas likes to say, was paying for the real estate. Right? He never quite gets into Usyk's neighborhood. He just could not bridge the gap. He, you had Usyk creating a mobile pocket. Gassiev needed a stationary pocket. He couldn't get Usyk to just stand there and take his shots. He couldn't muscle Usyk over to the corner for a period of time like he did Wolderchik. So right now, Gassiev is in an interesting place, folks. Right? He's developed a fastball that he now knows some elite fighters, at least Usyk, can handle. You should have realized that from the Dennis Labetta fight. That goes the distance. That was competitive. So Usyk now, in his mid-twenties, is going to have to add wrinkles to his game. Right? He's, he's going to have to learn that chasing after guys isn't always effective. You need a plan B where perhaps you don't chase. Perhaps you develop long range power, work on new punches, move away from hooks toward overhand rights. Maybe what you want to do too is to not throw punches some rounds. You have a big punch. This is a George Foreman strategy, by the way. You have a big punch. You know it. You understand you don't have the foot speed to chase the Michael Moores of the world around the ring. You understand, too, that if you land that big punch early in the fight, the other guy's at 100% early in the fight. He might be able to shake it off. So what you want to do early in the fight is to land some punches that appear to be your big punch, that give the other guy courage, that give him here on his chest. So he then makes the fatal mistake of trying to stay closer to the pocket because he thinks he can take your punch. And then, of course, you lower the boom, as George Foreman did. 
to become the oldest heavyweight champion in history at that point. You lower the boom in the later rounds with your real power after you have lulled the other guy into a false sense of complacency. At 24, Gassiev right now doesn't have that level of awareness, right? Foreman, of course, when he was younger, as he likes to say, was the dope that Ali Ropa doped. It took Foreman years to figure out strategy like this. Right? Gassiev right now, younger guy than Usyk, doesn't quite know all that Usyk knows. Let me talk to just uh, momentarily about the heavyweight division. You know, Tony Bellew, uh, I like Usyk in a Bellew-Usyk fight. But Tony, and I know I'm butchering his last name, Tony is actually one of the tougher fights for Usyk because Tony's been around, right? Tony sets traps in the ring. What I liked in his fight against David Hay, and don't kid yourself, David Hay on the inside is still dangerous, right? What really retired David Hay, in my opinion, is a messed up Achilles. Right. If I were David Hay and I know David Hay said, hey, I'm retired and, you know, uh, other British boxers, Carl Frotch said great career and stuff like that. Folks, this is boxing. Right. Guys always say, hey, I'm retired. The balloons are popping and all this other stuff. And then, of course, 18 months later, the guy's back in the ring. Isn't that boxing? Right. Henry Maskey, all of these guys, uh, Farad Arslan, all, all of these guys retire, then they're back, right? If David Hay comes back under the right circumstances with a good Achilles, I think David Hay is a major threat himself to some of these top heavyweights. But what I like with Tony is Tony's been around, Tony's older. Against David Hay, Tony concedes the pocket. Right? Tony's dancing away. Tony's looking at things like spacing and stuff like that. I know Tony is called Usyk Chinny. You know, Tony's had fights where he's come in and he's tried to hunt his opponent. Right? And so, with Tony, you would have two chess players switching it up, throwing pitches other than fastballs at different times in the fight, right? And Tony can hit. He drops David Hay three times in their last match, right? So I believe Tony is actually harder since Tony knows how to dance. Tony knows how to get up on the balls of his feet. While I would take Usyk against Tony, I believe Tony's a tougher matchup than, let's say, an Anthony Joshua who couldn't even throw straight right hands against Joseph Parker. You know, I know Dylan White's been talking to Joseph Parker, right? He gloves her off and stuff, and he said, hey, man, you didn't extend yourself enough against Anthony Joshua, right? You know what? All Parker has to do is to point out that he had Joshua so confused that a knockout artist couldn't throw straight right hands. A right-handed knockout artist had his right hand taken away from him in the fight. Clearly, Parker was doing something. Right? Clearly, Parker was doing something. And all I'm saying is, I believe if you look at Parker's inability, excuse me, if you look at Joshua's inability to throw a right hand against Parker, if you look at Wilder's inability to land a right hand in the early rounds against Luis Ortiz, who's a southpaw like Usyk and who isn't as mobile or as fast-handed as Usyk, then you realize that if Usyk gets by Tony Bellew, Bellew, 
if if Usyk gets by Tony, we'll make it easy for uh, this old guy here. Um, he'll be a major threat to the heavyweight crown. Major threat. Right? Major threat. Let me say this, too. And it'll get interesting. If, and I know the bookies don't see this one coming. Right? But you, the gambler, needs to consider this carefully. I believe David Price knows what's going on here. If Alexander Povetkin beats Joshua, I'm assuming there's a rematch clause. I'm assuming Eddie Hearn starting this new boxing channel isn't going to allow the heavyweight title to leave the room that easily. But just understand, rematch clauses are interesting because if you get your ass beat badly in the original fight, a lot of guys are going to say, you know what, that rematch clause, no, nah, nah, it's all right. I, I don't need it. Lucy and Butte after the Carl Froch fight, right? It's like, you know, I can have a rematch in Canada. You know, I don't really need a rematch against this guy who just beat me, right? If Povetkin beats Joshua. I believe Povetkin would give Usyk a harder fight than either Wilder or Joshua. Right? One man's opinion. So let's see how this heavyweight situation unfolds. Just understand, one of the very best in the sport, pound for pound, a man who unified the cruiserweight title Think about that. Unified it. In fact, forget unification. A guy who became the undisputed, undisputed cruiserweight champion in 15 fights. A decorated amateur. Is now in the heavyweight division. At a time when the champions are untested and just figuring out things like how to throw straight right hands in championship fights. Right? I mean, all I can say is this. Wilder, Joshua. Right? They beat Bermain Stavern and Charles Martin to become heavyweight champ. Let me repeat that. Bermain Stavern and Charles Martin. Let's just say neither of these guys beat Joe Lewis or Sonny Liston to become heavyweight champion. Right? The big win Joshua has is over a Vladimir Klitschko who lost his title to a different Englishman, Tyson Fury, and then was out the ring for more than a year. Right? Wilder in his last fight was so convincing that at the beginning of a round, and I've never seen this before in my life, at the beginning of a round, <laughs> the referee the referee gives him a standing eight. And let's be serious about Luis Ortiz. I know Luis Ortiz is highly skilled, but like Vladimir Klitschko, isn't he on the other side of 35? I mean, Klitschko and Ortiz are in their late 30s. I know heavyweights age more slowly than everyone else. Right? But just understand, the current crop of heavyweight champion really hasn't been tested severely. Right? I thought Joshua was going to be tested by Joseph Parker until I saw the referee. And even in that fight on British soil, According to CompuBox, Joseph Parker landed more power punches. And think about it, that fight's so luck, uh, lackluster that Joseph Parker's upcoming opponent is saying to him, hey, why weren't you more aggressive in that fight? A fight in which Parker lands more power punches than the champion. If Parker was not aggressive in that fight, what was Joshua? So you should be paying close attention to the heavyweight division right now.
right? You know, I believe the major titles are up for grabs. Think about it. Manuel Char has a share of the heavyweight title. And he lost. Got knocked out by the guy who Usyk beat before he fought Gassiev. Right? So please, take Usyk seriously. Right? Cruiserweights have gained weight before to win the heavyweight title. Englishmen know that because David Hay did it. Right? Evander Holyfield did beat Mike Tyson twice. Right? He also beat Riddick Bowe. He also got a draw. Okay, we know the judges were deluded, but he got a draw against Lennox Lewis. Right? He was the guy who came up from the lighter weights to the heavyweight division. By the way, let me point out that he lost to a former middleweight champion. I would encourage everyone to look at Holifield against James Tony. Masterpiece fight. Tony beats him. Tony, people forget, wins the heavyweight title in the ring. Only to get stripped for failing a drug test after the fight. Right? So, smaller guys have done well at heavy. And all I'm saying to you... <laughs> Right? All I'm saying to you right now is that the heavyweight title isn't exactly in the hands of Mike Tyson and Joe Lewis. Right? There isn't an Ali right now with a share of the heavyweight title. Right? Some of the most talented guys in the division. Tyson Fury, Joseph Parker, don't have the belts into this mix is Alexander Usyk, right? If the talks break down with Tony Bellew, if I were Usyk, I would say, look, I'm unbeaten, decorated amateur, Olympic gold medalist, right? You two big guys, right? 6'7 and 6'6, six, six, I believe. You know, holla at a brother. Give a cruiserweight some love. I'll risk my unbeaten record against an unbeaten heavyweight champion. Right? If I'm Usyk, I would realize that at heavyweight right now, quite frankly, fighting some of these contenders is more dangerous for him than fighting some of the current champions. Consider Usyk a major threat to the crown. He starts moving against Wilder. Wilder's not going to know what to do. Right? Joshua starts throwing that left jab of his against the southpaw who can move. Right? Joshua's not going to know what to do and that punch doesn't land. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Let me also add this too. The WBSS, that uh, World Boxing Super Series, was spectacular. Right? I want to give a big thumbs up to Richard Schaefer, who is making it happen behind the scenes. I thought having Muhammad Ali's wife in Moscow was excellent. Uh, I just like the way the whole end played out. You know, I just like the fact that they had it set up so Usyk was able to call his boys into the ring. One of them being Vasil Lomachenko. Um, I just thought that the tournament truly had the best at Cruiser. Right? Gassiev, Dordikos, Maris Bredis, Usyk. That Cruiserweight WBSS was simply spectacular. Here in the United States, we need to start demanding that our networks carry great fights and great tournaments like this. Well done. Thanks for stopping by.